Thank you for following along with Forgotten Gear Restorations on this 6G6 Revision A basement. Um, this is the second part and hopefully a three-part series where we are discovering the culprit of the sound suck. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, top of the afternoon to you Gooden's mutants out there. If, if I appear to be out of it, it's because I am. I had a minor eye surgery yesterday, nothing major. It's minor, I'm recovering nicely, thank you. Um, speaking of recovery, looking at the 61 uh, Fender Baseman 6G6 Revision A, there were lots of revisions. And then a lot of circuit changes that weren't exactly covered on the, the various schematics that are out there. And um, the issue with this one, if you recall from the prior episodes, um, would be a hole in the sound after, um, after really driving the, the phase inverter or the output tubes. You strike a chord while the volume's up. Uh, then basically what happens, let me turn this down. Got it cooking for nothing. Then basically what happens is um, we get a, an incredibly obvious sound dropout um, and, and then when one is not playing it takes about a second for everything to recover so my my initial thoughts went over to um, the filter caps but they were recently changed with some nice quality F and T caps um, having a, a leaky coupling cap uh, was something also that kind of came to mind but there was no red plating and these are also uh, very recent caps these are nice uh, blue sozos there's no leaking there. There's no leaking anywhere. Um, I thought that maybe one of the old uh, dropping resistors on a filter pack board could be failing uh, dynamically under load. That was not the case. So I had to really just withdraw myself from the bench for a little bit and put some thought into it. What could be happening? I, this is when you need a scope. So 400 megahertz sine wave into the input, about um, 500 millivolts. That's about a guitar signal for most of you mutants out there that aren't using uh, active pickups, and most of you aren't with an amp like this. All right, so we're monitoring uh, pin five of both of these octals here. So I'm gonna drive it up until it starts clipping, and then I'm gonna back down. And there we have a little bit of asymmetrical clipping here. And then it's just starting here, just to clip the top peaks. See that? It's all back down. It's all about right there. Um, and I'm, I'm also monitoring uh, the grid voltage. So what are we looking at? That's about right. I'm suspecting some kind of blocking distortion. That's, that's my thought. We're looking at grid blocking. So again, we have these large signal swings that are pushing a phase inverter's grid positive relative, relative to its cathode. And then that's causing the grid to conduct and it shouldn't. And then it starts pulling current. And the coupling caps are charging. And because there's a grid, grid leak resistor to ground, it can't discharge instantly and it builds up a, a DC bias shift and it pushes the tube towards cutoff then you get the the volume drop the asymmetrical clipping that we're seeing here um, what else you're getting the the big delay uh, the swell back up into volume the recovery delay after um, after hitting your cords you're getting that which should not be perceptible and, and then you're getting like a saggy distortion. Th those are all indicative of that particular condition. And it, it, it just so happens, and, and then watch this. H here's another telltale sign. You don't need a scope. Take a look. Remember how I said we were monitoring the grids there? So... <clears throat> This should be relatively stable. If we see this dipping down, we got a big problem. So let's push her 
into overdrive. And you can see here that the, the tubes aren't symmetrically clipping. That could just be either the tubes themselves, it could be a, a coupling cap issue, it could be the phase inverter. It's not that big of a deal. But watch this, let me move this over. Watch this. Negative eight volts DC. It shouldn't be there. Now I'm gonna take the volume away kind of abruptly, the signal. And then look at that. It rebounds back up to 50. And so there we go. Was it the prior text fault? No. Um, th this is actually, I'm gonna say it's more of a feature than a flaw. Let me turn it off. It's, it's, and get this loud scope off, huh? It's more of a feature than a flaw of having such a large signal swing hitting these uh, 6L6s or 5881s. Um, in, in later revisions, uh, Fender reduced a lot of the low end information uh, from hitting that part of the power amp by reducing the phase inverter coupling cap values. Um, they added grid stoppers to the, the power tube grids. Um, maybe they started biasing the amps a little bit colder. But one thing's for certain is that Leo and gang were not intending on you playing this loud with your basement. But I'm sure that the complaints started rolling in um, oh, another thing is um, some of them started uh, shipping with 12 AT7s. Now, is that like because you need more current drive? I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but there are a lot of things that were put in place on a lot of revisions to help reduce this particular issue. And, um, and, and here's what they did. Uh, let me change camera angles. All right, so this is not going to be the most uh, sensual of shots, and let me get these probes out of the way. And and for you uh, for you goons out there that are going to probe your own, and I normally don't show this stuff because I don't want you guys getting hurt. Everybody, um, everybody, not everybody, but I get a lot of comments about, hey, how come you don't show more how-to stuff or more uh, technical stuff? It's because of this. I don't want you guys getting hurt. If I get hurt, it's fine. It's not okay if you get hurt. So um, uh, let me uh, zoom in. Let me zoom on in. Um, I'm not gonna show you the schematic o over, um, o over my computer here because it's just not gonna look nice. It's just not gonna. Um, but I will pull it up for myself so I can have a reference all right. Where's my little 6G6, buddy? All right. And then even, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's incredibly difficult to find the version that has six filter caps and three droppers under the doghouse. You're, you're almost never going to find that one. I haven't found that one yet. It's, I'm not saying it's not out there, but I don't see it. So, um, so yes, what makes the, uh, the base channel so juicy is there is actually two dedicated 12AX7s to it. Um, if you're looking at uh, a traditional, when I say traditional, I mean like blackface uh, fender setup. And let me get some light for you. Okay. When, when you're looking at the traditional setup, um, yeah, there's some mixers here. These are a different value than you would normally see in the other amps. Uh, these are 470 Ks. These are the mixers. Um, traditionally, what you would see is you'll have your, your inputs mixing here and then going into the phase inverter input um, with a signal cap. Usually right here. Um, you're not getting that here. You're getting a jumper under the board. 
um, you're, you're, um, you're, you're blocking or um, you should say decoupling caps will be on the input side of these mixing resistors as opposed to having one on the output side. So um, one of the band-aids Fender came up with is to put a 0 0.005 microfarad uh, coupling cap there. You remove the jumper, you could put that guy there. And then you'll notice on all the modern and even the the more the more common black faced error amps you'll find that the grid blockers there right there on the power tubes themselves so there's nothing limiting current there and you're going to get issues if you're driving this hard and that's where my mind is here there's evidence in a form of data showing that um, so my customer wants to keep his amp as original as possible, but the reason why I have this gear is to undergird uh, my position and hopefully uh, convince um, him and, and, and those of us out there that want to keep it 100% original, and who doesn't, um, just to convince them that, I look, I got I to gotta reconfigure this if you're going to want to use it live or if you're going to want to crank this thing up. I, I, I've got to add in some of the revisional components that Fender did just to to mitigate this particular issue and that's what we're looking at here so hope this finds you guys well I'm a little out of my mind right now so this should have been covered in one take but you know, I don't have the frame of mind to do that and I really shouldn't be uh, poking around in this thing with monovision so bye